So essentially to get our answer in example one, we found the area between that curve and the x-axis. When we start talking about definite integrals, we're talking about an approach that we're going to use to find the area under a given curve, or more precisely, that area between a curve and the x-axis. So we're going to be given an upper and lower bound. So for this curve, that might be from x equals 20 to x equals 40. And what we want to find is the area between that curve and the x-axis. We would represent that by writing the integral, so that integration symbol, that elongated s, of f of x dx. So the initial setup looks just like an indefinite integral. But to make that a definite integral, we add an upper and lower bound of integration. So since we're integrating from 20 to 40, that lower bound is 20, and our upper bound is going to be 40. Or similarly, if we were looking at values from negative 40 to negative 20, we would again be looking at values between our curve and the x-axis. So we'd be looking to find the area of this shaded region, which in this case would be the integral of f of x dx with a lower bound of negative 40 and an upper bound of negative 20. So what we're building up to is the idea of, again, just finding that area bounded between the x-axis and our curve. Something that's not necessarily initially intuitive is that even though we're calculating areas, we can end up with negative values. Even though typically when we're calculating areas um, in terms of uh, yards, cities, other applications, when we start talking about areas with curves, we can end up with both positive and negative values. And it's determined based off whether that area is above the x-axis or below the x-axis. So if we think of the y-axis as the height of our region, if y is positive, we have a positive height. So in this case, integrating from 20 to 40, whatever that result is, is going to be something positive, greater than 0. In this case, that area extends down below the x-axis. So the height of that region is going to have a negative value meaning that in this case, that area is going to end up being something negative or something less than zero. So we can end up with both positive areas, negative areas. But in either case, what we're doing is looking to evaluate an integral over a specifically bounded region. And our final result is going to be a single number. So unlike with indefinite integrals, when we ended up with a function, when we evaluate definite integrals, the final result will be a number.